Hello, I'm Alistair Stevenson reporting for v3.co.uk and today I'm reviewing the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now the Galaxy S4 follows on from the legacy set from the Galaxy S3, one of the best selling Android phones ever, and it's designed to be the current biggest competitor to the next Apple iPhone. However, design wise, it's not actually that different. And you'd be forgiven for thinking it looks all but identical to the S3, featuring the same pebble-like design and polycarbonate casing. Additionally, it's fairly similar size-wise, measuring at 137 by 70 by 7.9 millimeters and weighing 130 grams. That's just three grams lighter than the S3. This, in some ways, is good as it means it's comfortable in hand, but in other ways, it's quite bad. Build quality has been an ongoing concern about Samsung Galaxy phones, and this is equally true on the S4 with its polycarbonate casing feeling fairly flimsy, and even when you remove it, it in general just feeling a bit cheaper than its £600 price tag. This is a bit of an issue considering how top-end devices like the iPhone 5 or HTC One feel by comparison. That said, it does have a number of nice things about it, chief of which is the display. The Samsung Galaxy X S4 packs a 5-inch display with an astounding 441 pixel per inch density. That means it's really nice to look at, has, it's wonderfully crisp, has brilliant viewing angles. We're less enamoured, however, with TouchWiz. Again, TouchWiz has been an ongoing problem for Samsung devices now, mind. Generally overloading them with bloatware and custom widgets that you really don't need. You can see here a great example of this with the Samsung App Store. The App Store basically has all the same similar services to Google Play Store and doesn't really add anything to the OS. But still, it's uninstallable, which means you don't have the ability to get rid of it, only move it out of sight which is a bit of an annoyance for anybody using the device. Other not so good additions include iScroll and Air Gesture. iScroll is a nifty feature designed to let the S4 know when you finish reading text on the page and automatically scroll down, whereas Air Gesture is meant to let you interface with the device using minority report style gestures. Testing the two, we found they don't really work that well, especially iScroll, which in general, is, there's a bit of a knack to actually getting it to recognize when you're reading, involving you making pretty over-the-top movements and taking a while to actually re recognize your input and scroll down. In general meaning, it's quicker and easier to just use the traditional finger input. That said, there are a few nice touches, one of which is the addition of S-Translator. Now, S-Translator is a nice little service that lets you speak into the phone or have somebody else speak into the phone, and it will then translate whatever they said into the la your own language. This means if you're abroad and don't speak the local lingo, you can actually get your point across without having to do an embarrassing game of charades, which, having been abroad a few times and British, is pretty useful. Now, there are a few other good software to it that touches, though these are generally the ones that were added on the S3, like Pop-Up Play. This is activated the same way as all other devices, where you pull out the little menu bar here and can pull out whichever app you want open. This then lets you have two apps open at any one time, Pop-up play is also the video feature, which means that while these apps are open, you can take a video from the Video Hub, take it as a thumbnail, and drop it anywhere you like. In terms of actual performance, the S4 is pretty reasonable. It features a 1.9 GHz quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. Power aficionados will be sad at the lack of an octa-core processor, but as we said about all quad-core devices, they're a bit ahead of their time and there isn't any app demanding enough to really make a quad-core device available on the Google Play Store at the moment, meaning at the very least this, that you're still future-proofed with the Samsung Galaxy S4. The camera is another interesting part. The S4 packs a 13 megapixel rear camera that's backed up by a 2 megapixel camera. In terms of image quality, we're quite impressed with the device, with it taking crisp and fairly good photos, each with a good colour balance and decent brightness levels. Additionally, unlike things like the Xperia Z, which also has a 13 megapixel camera, we've noticed the S4's snapper is great at taking photos noise free, even when you have awkward lighting, like a mix of artificial and natural. Additionally, you've got a few custom shot modes, like animated photo, which basically lets you take a GIF, so you can make a few funny animated photos, eraser, which lets you remove, take loads of photos, and then erase certain parts that you don't want. So if you have an unexpected bird fly by or an annoying photo bomber jump in, you can get rid of them and ensure you still have a nice shot. Though of these, most of them are quite gimmicky. The best ones we found are the traditional rich, rich tone HDR and nighttime modes, which let you take photos in low light conditions and get better results than most cameras, 
they'll be warned they're still not on par with those with the Lumia 920, which remains the best camera phone on the market, outside of the 808 PureView. Overall, we're quite impressed with the Galaxy S4, but mainly from software innovations that were added to the S3. The newer parts of it aren't that good, and for this reason, we're thinking, especially given the lack of certain key features, like Knox Business Support, a useful service for businesses that, like BlackBerry Balance, lets you create separate sandboxed areas, so you can have work and personal areas, where your company can control what you do on the work side, so what apps go on, and do remote wipes of anything, without actually affecting stuff on the personal side, meaning your family photos should remain safe from your company should they choose to wipe the device. For this reason, while we're thinking the S4 will do very well, and will probably be 2030's best-selling Android phone, we're not so sure it's going to beat the Apple I next Apple iPhone in terms of sales. I'm Alistair Stevenson, thanks for watching.